The some evacuees have decided to live away from their hometowns, while others are waiting to return. But both parties say they have no emotional support. Three years after the nuclear accident, and the struggle goes on. Is there any way to rebuild Namie? Representatives of residents and experts have been meeting to discuss reconstruction plans since last July. They're currently looking into a plan to create a town for decommissioning. The plan calls for creating a new city centre that can serve as a base for projects to scrap the damaged reactors. The idea is to build accommodation and other facilities for workers and businesses engaged in decommissioning work at the nearby Fukushima Daiichi plant. The plan reflects the residents' decision to keep the town alive in whatever form. The town authorities are also studying how to build a new city centre. On this day, Deputy Mayor Watanabe visited the mayor to explain the plan. Watanabe hopes to meet the residents' wish to return home as soon as possible. It could be called a compact city or something. I think it's a good starting point. The plan is for reconstruction efforts to be concentrated only in low radiation areas and to create a town to encourage people to return to Namie. The plan would involve asking private landowners to provide their property and for some people to give up their old homes. But Watanabe believes it will help the town take a step forward. It is unrealistic to rebuild the town the way it was before the March 11th disaster. We think it's necessary to show realistic plans, such as creating a new town center. We don't want to see our hometown disappear. We need to do something to keep Nami alive in whatever form. After hearing about the new plan, Yashima began thinking about relocating his business back in Namie. On this day, he visited his parents at their temporary home in Iwaki City. Hi, Hikaru. Yashima doesn't know if the plan will work. But suffering without any future hope is too hard. My business isn't going well, and we haven't settled yet. We can't receive much in compensation either. If we return to Namie, I think I can get more orders. So I'm thinking about going there to prepare. What do you think about the risk of radiation exposure? I don't know how else we can live. So what are you going to do? Well, if about 80% of the people return. I'm asking what you want to do, not others. I, I don't want to hear you say that you will return if others do. Well, an elderly couple like us cannot live even if we return to Namie by ourselves. But if the family decides to go back, well, we'd be encouraged to do the same. The Ashimas want to live together like before. But with no prospect for the ironworks business, they don't know if that's the best solution. Should they return home or settle somewhere else?
I don't know. I really don't know what to do. With us is sociologist Hiroshi Kainuma from Iwaki in Fukushima Prefecture. He has interviewed more than 1,000 evacuees as a project researcher at Fukushima Future Center for Regional Revitalization. The conversation between Mr. Yashima and his parents does reveal the evacuees' mixed feelings, doesn't it? The issue of residents returning to their hometowns or resettling elsewhere is often discussed in relation to how radiation affects their health. But as we saw, the problem is much more complicated than that. We tend to think the elderly would want to return because they don't need to worry about long-term damage from radiation, but it's hard for them to live in an area with no hospital or shops nearby. Meanwhile, the younger population may feel that they have to return because of their jobs. I think it's time for us to look at the complex nature of this issue. We heard Mr. Yashima, who has already bought a house in Iwaki, say that he felt uprooted, drifting and leading a precarious life. I believe this really is how the evacuees must feel. We saw that the percentage of those who want to go back to their hometowns dropped from an initial 70% to 40% and then to 18% last summer. How should we see this transition? We tend to report and interpret this to mean that many people no longer want to go home. We should, however, understand that some want to return but cannot, or don't want to return but have to for various reasons. Others want to go home deep down but cannot find an opportunity to do so. It's an intricate problem. We cannot see into this matter by simply asking people whether they want to go home. We need to take a deeper look into it. At the end of last year, the government changed its policy on aid for those who had evacuated. It basically gave up its initial plan to let all former residents return home and is now offering financial support to those wanting to buy houses and resettle elsewhere, as well as to those who seek to return. Some say the government is now encouraging people to relocate. How do the evacuees see this? Some do see it that way, that the government is encouraging people to find a new home elsewhere. However, many evacuees apparently feel that until last year, the government had given them no choice and simply said that they will return home someday. They had not been given an alternative. Some evacuees think uh, the recent change in policy is a step forward and that it supports the rights of both those seeking to return home and those seeking to resettle elsewhere. We should, however, understand that the new policy will not solve all the problems the evacuees face. What do you mean? We outside Fukushima opt to simplify the problem and say these people want to go home right now, no matter what. But apparently things are not that simple. Some want to go home once shops and hospitals have reopened in their old neighborhood. Others feel they have no choice but to return to their hometown now, even though they are hesitant to do so. We should understand that this is not a choice between going home or not. There should be a third alternative to wait and see how things turn out for a while. We call these people either evacuees or resettlers. But a majority of them haven't yet decided whether they will go home. They're just waiting. The important thing for us to do in the fourth year since the disaster is to discuss what we can do for those who are still waiting. We saw in the video that the people of Namie came up with their own plan to revitalize their hometown as a center for decommissioning the crippled nuclear reactors. The revitalization plan suggests taking the first step of reconstruction with a small area of about 700 to 1,000 meters and that all facilities should be neatly packed together. People who were forced to leave their hometown due to the nuclear accident are now aiming to rebuild their town around the planned decommissioning of the reactors. How do you see this? 
Some are apparently not happy with the fact that they have to turn to the nuclear industry to rebuild their hometown. This feeling can be sensed among former residents of the town and outsiders. It's quite understandable. Meanwhile, others have placed their hopes in the plan that the small area may become the core of reconstruction. The town of Hirono, which lies south of the nuclear plant, for example. The town has a registered population of around 5,000. But when you visit, you can tell it's quite lively for its size. Only about 10 to 20 percent of the town's registered population, or between 500 and 1,000 people, have actually returned. But many stores and lodging facilities have reopened. In a way, Hirono has already started rebuilding itself around the decommissioning and decontamination process. In that sense, Namie might also be able to use its small center for decommissioning as a lead in the rebuilding process. It doesn't have to depend 100 percent on the nuclear industry. It can invite new businesses or introduce a new system of education. It can start from there to rebuild its community and industries and nurture human resources. That should offer a glimmer of hope for those who wish to return to their hometown. But what does it mean for those who have decided to relocate? Some of them might say the reconstruction plan will do them no good. But there are other opinions. When we make plans to revitalize a certain region, some people say they choose to live elsewhere, but want to make their former hometown a place where their descendants would want to return 30 or 50 years later. I hope the revitalization plan will work in that way. That might give the evacuees some emotional support. I hope so. Thank you, Mr. Kainuma. That's all for today's close-up. Thank you for watching.